Hey GIS enthusiasts, welcome back to another ArcGIS Pro tutorial. Today, we'll explore unsupervised classification, a powerful technique for automatically grouping similar land cover types using satellite imagery. If you're into GIS, remote sensing, and geospatial analysis, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more ArcGIS Pro, GIS programming, and Python tutorials. Let's get started. Same as the last time, so to do our uh, classification, we'll just go to imagery and we have the classification wizard in here. Okay, so we'll go to the classification wizard and we'll be setting as that the classification method will be unsupervised and classification type would be pixel based, right? And then we have an option to or add the schema. Okay, so if you want, so we know I told you that so unsupervised will only create the different whatever the number of classes we need to only create those classes numbered from like if you want six classes, it'll be numbered from one to six. Okay, so in the later stages, if you want to assign these classes to some other schema, you can you have an option here to set the scheme. So if we have so the last time we already created the schema, right? So if you want to use that, you could use that. Or oh, if you could actually use the default schema, so default schema was NLCD 10G11. So if, I don't know if you guys remember. So during the first time when we did the training samples, it actually generated a default schema, right? So that schema you can use. Or oh, you could just uh, let it be empty, right? Oh. Uh, I'll just give the default schema and the first thing is more is it classification is there supervised no, unsupervised pixel based I'll set the default schema and output location let me be the default location just click on next and then for the unsupervised we only have one algorithm available that is the ISO cluster okay so we'll set the ISO cluster and then we'll see how much number of classes we need okay so if I want something like six classes in here maybe I could give the number of 10 so so that we will it will be it's much easier for us to merge the different classes okay because sometimes if I give only six uh, it might only create six or it will create only five or sometimes it might misinterpret interpret the different classes into one okay sometimes which means uh, it could merge these uh, which uh, the built up land and some kind of other lands as one okay so it's better i found that, that it's better if you give a number that is more than the number of actual classes you need so if you want six classes just give it as a uh, some range that is above the number so for now i'm giving it as 10 okay and the rest of the parameters is it's actually related to machine learning topics okay so maximum number of iterations means how much time this algorithm should keep on learning from this uh, or keep on do the classification process based on our data okay so if you give 20 here it means that it will do the try to classify the images 20 times okay i mean the pixels 20 times so it will be doing uh, those many times of uh, kind of iterating all over the data and then maximum number of cluster merges per iteration means how much all uh, of pixels that it can or how much all, uh, clusters it can actually uh, assign from a pixel so if I give five here, it means that in one iteration, it can only merge five number of clusters. So if I give 20 here, then it means that 20 into five number of clusters that it can handle, okay? And this maximum merged in sense, which means it's related to some kind of uh, machine learning algorithm, which means like how much all distance of uh, objects that it can actually take. So if I give 0.5 here, it means that 0.5 meters uh, worth of uh, pixels that you can take from here and the minimum samples per cluster skip factor let it be just the default kind of things 
So maybe I could also give the number of iterations as maybe 25. So let's see how it does. I'm giving the number of classes as 10. Okay. So let's see how many classes that it actually creates. Okay, so it has actually created 10 classes. Okay, now if I give something like the iterations is 50 and number of clusters that can do is I'm giving like 10 and maximum merge distance be, minimum samples I could give something like 30. Okay, and now let's see what's the difference that it's this here. So there's not much difference, right? But I think the first one was much better. So let's just keep it as 20. And uh, number of iteration doesn't matter. The number, the maximum, the number that you give for the maximum your uh, accuracy will be. But the sum, the thing is like if you give a very big number here, then it means that it will take the model will take much more time to actually categorize your objects. Okay. So just give an average of whatever that you do. So don't give too much of a number for the number of iterations and don't give too much, too less of a number. Just give somewhere in between. So, so based on, you, you, you can just run it over and over again and change these parameters and then whichever the, whichever the result that you found was better, you could use that. Okay. So the number of iterations will it be a maximum number of clusters. So the default was 5, right? So let's just give the 5 and let's run that. So I don't need this one. And I don't need the previous one. Okay. So the algorithm has actually found out 10 different classes from the image. Okay. So this will be our output image. Then the next steps what that we have to do is we have to actually give a meaningful values to this kinds of uh, pixel values. So, so what is the difference in the supervised and unsupervised? For the supervised that we are actually giving the training samples and using the values from the training sample it actually uh, classifies the pixels into different classes. This one it doesn't have any kind of uh, reference data to look into. So what it does is it will just look at the number of classes that we need. Okay. Then it means it knows that that I actually need 10 classes that we made from this image. So it will look up each and every pixel values and it will actually convert or it will cluster, right? So what the, the, that is cluster means, which means that it will actually cluster similar looking pixel values into one class. Okay. So each iteration it will cluster five. So it will take five kinds of clusters similar. The next iteration it will do the first, next five kinds of iteration. Uh, clusters together. So what that's what it does. So each iteration or each round of uh, the training or the validation it will actually clusters the data together. So it will it will see that all these objects it's found out that all these pixels are of a similar pixel value. So it clusters all these pixels into one class and it found out that all these pixels are found, uh, similar in their digital number. So it clusters all these pixels into one class. Similarly, it will be finding different 10 different kinds of pixel values and then it will actually convert these kind of different uh, pixel values into different classes. Okay. And if I give next year, this is where I can do, uh, I can create a, the output image for a uh, classified image. So, so for wise classified, I will just give the name here. Okay. And I will just run. So now it will be creating the final output of our supervised classes classified image and then it will be like the preview right it will only so since i asked for 10 classes it had actually created 10 classes numbered from 0 to 9 okay similarly here also it will be creating an image here based on the number of parameters based on the type of parameters that i give 
So since I gave 50 iterations, it will be running 50 times uh, over and over to actually produce the kind of image that I actually want. Okay. So a supervised. Ah, this is unsupervised, right? I give a wrong name here. Unsupervised. So based on the parameters and based on the number of iterations that you give, it will be giving you a different output and the time it takes to load also will vary. Okay. So now that's my output is here. So this will be the first output or the first uh, actual output of a supervised, unsupervised classified uh, image, right? Next, what remains is for us to give meaningful uh, information to this. Okay. So if you give on next. It will actually create the assign classes wizard. Okay, so this is where we have to give the meaningful. Uh, oh, me, me, what, what's meaning? So it, it has like zero to nine classes. So this is the step where we actually actually give out the what kind of uh, classes that each numbered classes are. Okay, so this is where the later stage. So it, till now we didn't give any kind of inputs to the classification or algorithm, right? So so, the, so that it found out the first type of output that was the differently numbered classified output. Okay. Now this is where we have to step in. We'll be assigning each classes to a meaningful value. Okay. So we have this is the default um, schema that I loaded before, right? So using this schema, you could do or you could just you can add new classes also. Okay. So I'll be creating or assigning the main uh, values to these different pixel or this different classes by using the schema that I have. Okay. So I know that these are water bodies, right? So I can just click on water. Okay. After that, I have an option here called assign. Okay. So I'll just click on water, click on assign, and I'll just set whatever the pixels that are water bodies. Okay. So those are water bodies. This one also water bodies, this one also water bodies, and these were also water bodies. Okay, so all those pixels I have assigned to water. Now you see here the, the pixel values of or the classes of 3, 7, 8, and 9 have been assigned to water. Okay, so what's remaining for us is develop plan. Okay, so if I come over here, I can find out that these pixels are developed, right? So if I Turn off. Yeah, so these pixels are develop plan. So I'll just click on develop, click on assign, and then click this value. So those have been assigned to develop. Okay. Then maybe what's remaining for me is I have barrel land. So if I see over here, which one is barrel land? So these are these are barrel lands. Okay, so what's remaining here? Okay, I have the vegetation here. So I'll just click on forest. Okay, it's forest here. Yeah, maybe I'll just click on forest here and then assign the value of forest. Now that is done. And what's remaining is I have Pixel values of two and zero. Okay, so zero, yeah, zero is this one. This is actually not needed here. So let's see where this two value is. Okay, I think it's 
this one. Okay. So if I click this one. So I believe those are agricultural lands no? or shrub lands it could be. So I'll just give it as shrub lands, okay? So I'll just give the class of shrub lands in here. So those have been in, then what's remaining is six. So six. This is six. Now, if you see those, maybe it's just bit, uh, okay. I set this as wetlands. So six, I'll just give us wetlands, and zero, mm, let it be. And I don't have any plant or cultivated, I just remove those class. So I gave the water developed barren forest, shrubland, and herbaceous outside of me. Yeah, okay. So I have actually created the classified image, right? So and so I can just click on next year. So this is where we, we can find out if we need to actually do any reclassification. So if you remember, so we did the same step in our supervised image, right? So if we need to actually do any kind of reclassification, so we could do the uh, classify any within a region. We can just give the current class and then we can give the new class and then those will be actually created to our uh, or transfer or those classes will be changed from the current class to new class right but since we did the unsupervised or super unsupervised classification here there's no need i believe to actually change any kinds of date uh, classes okay so after that you have the option to set the name okay so i could just give the name as final unsupervised Super image, okay, and then I'll just click on run. Okay, and such I have created the Final unsupervised image. Okay, so this is how it will be, right? So if you see over here, you can know, right? Everything has been actually changed here. So if you see, we have the urban areas have been clearly classified, vegetated areas have been clearly classified, water bodies have been clearly classified. And if you see over here, barrel lands and wetlands. So everything has been actually clearly classified here. Okay. So we can use this kinds of classification if there is no need for manual intervention. And if you believe that the algorithm can actually clearly distinguish between different classes based on the pixel values, then we can actually use this uh, unsupervised classification to just let the algorithm itself decide what all classes that it should uh, distinguish and then later on you can give uh, meaningful values to those classes or even you could merge those classes so if you remember we have for the water bodies we have almost four different classes but then i actually merged all those four different classes into a single classes that is water right so this is how you can do your unsupervised classified image.